Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Tune Review uh, for tonight's, well, celebration of yet another signing. Um, we're not going to do a deep dive into him until he's officially announced, obviously, as a Newcastle United player. Uh, but we will be talking about it throughout the show, uh, obviously getting your uh, feelings of it in the chat as well and see what you uh, you guys think as well. Um, but it is a, a very good, positive move for Newcastle United, no doubt about it. Um, if you do enjoy the show, guys, as usual, please do give it the thumbs up and keep us up there in the uh, YouTube search results, uh, just so people like yourselves can find the channel in the future and hopefully subscribe on our way to 23,000. Um, and you can donate to the channel as usual if you hit that dollar sign just underneath the live chat, uh, and that will also get your comment read out straight away as well. And don't forget, you can become a member of the Tune Review by hitting the join button just underneath the three of us, and that will take you through that way as well. So thank you very much in advance for that. Uh, good evening, fellas. Good evening. Hello. Uh, now, Billy, obviously, you've got your brand new third kit on tonight, which, uh, by the way, I still haven't heard anything about mine or Phoebe's arriving. Uh, but great news on Livermento earlier today. Some are saying 35, some are saying 40 with add ons. Um, he's coming at a price, but he's a very, very good player at that price. Yeah, it's quite the same 32 um, initial. So, you know, you pay someone, you take the choice on which one you believe. Um, a great, great young talent, equally adept at right back or left back. We can play him at left back as well, as often as we want. We could also use him as right back cover for Trippier if he needs a rest, and then bring in one of the other left backs that we've got, Target or Werner, whoever. It's just a great signing, and it has got loads of potential. Will play for England on countless occasions, and quite. If, if we're going to say that, you're going to say thirty odd millions quite cheap. Uh, well, to be honest, I mean. <laughs> We've got Simon saying there that um, another YouTube channel was saying that, that you know, Castore is ending this season. I've, I've heard a few rumours about that. As we said, a lot of channels have covered that. But listen, I'm not saying anything on Castore until, you know, there's an announcement. It's pointless. We know how shit they are. Um, and hopefully they will be binned at the end of the season because, uh, well, they're terrible. Um, but Alex, do, do you think Livermento's coming in as our, I know he's a right back, but is he coming in as left back? Um, because it's an awful lot of money to pay for him to sit on the substitutes bench and be second fiddle to Kieran Trippier. I can only think he's coming in to play left back. Or I wouldn't be so sure. I, I don't know. I mean, I've just, I've just been reading through before we went live the Athletics article on, on Livermento, and they've literally alluded at no point did they allude to left back. Um, I've seen him play I, left back. I've literally watched him play at left back. Yeah, so I've bad. seen I've seen him play left back. However, I'm not so sure that's why we're signing him. I feel like it's an alternative option to Trippier. He's a very different player to Trippier. He's a ball carrier. Um, you know, I don't think they're spending that kind of money to put him on the bench, Alex. I can I cannot possibly see. I mean, Cleden Mags as well. We did the same know. for Anthony Gordon. To be well, fair. Where will he play? Surely not right back. He isn't a left back. 40 million to sit on the bench. I guess in Eddie we trust, but I'm a bit perplexed, to be honest, have a good show. But I, it's the same logic as Anthony Gordon. We bought him in as a because he had the right tools and he was you're able to mould him into the kind of player he looks like he's becoming now. Mm -hmm. um, I think Tino's a little bit further ahead of that. See, I've already called him Tino, look. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I do think long term he's the right back. 
Um, yeah, short term, short term, maybe. Yeah, we might see some some left back, or we might see him used as a right back, um, potentially in the Champions League or in rotations in certain fixtures, mm. because he's going to be better better at counter attacking. He's he's younger, faster. He's potentially going to have a lot more energy than Trippier can. Sort of, you know, it's just what it is. I think I don't see I don't see why we wouldn't line up on occasion. Burn at left back, Livermento at right back in in certain cup or Champions League fixtures. I could see that. I'm not um, saying he's going to come in the opposition and, and is. not play any any time at right back. No. Uh, by the way, we just got another member, uh, Morgan Ashton. Uh, welcome to Members Club, Morgan. Uh, thank you for your support of the channel, and you are now going into uh, all the draws that, and and special things that will be coming up for the members very soon. I just don't think. I mean, Billy, you've said there you've seen him at left back, and uh, so have I. And I, I think. You know, there will be times, obviously, when Kieran doesn't play that I think Livermento will go to right back. I agree. But I can't, I just can't see us spending this money. Remember, it's 40, 35 or 40 plus add ons. You know, he's not coming to sit on the bench. No, there's I mean, no Craig way. Hopes also said it's 30 plus five. There's, there's a, a huge range between 30 and 40 that's been banded yeah. around. So it's yeah. difficult to know what the fee is. It is difficult, but I just can't see him coming into uh, yeah, to sit on his ass. Additionally, I, I the fact that he was go on, go well, on. the fact that he was twenty three million pounds, the original bid is what's being quoted. I, I fail to see how hardball negotiators like us are going to go from twenty three to forty um, in quite a short space of time. I just find that I don't find that believable. The fact that we've gone from twenty three to forty, I feel like the more realistic is thirty to thirty five. Uh, I think forties. I don't think it's that at all. No, I think he comes in and I think he starts at left back. I honestly do. Uh, the, we go back to the, the old academy report from Chelsea, which said he's equally adept at both sides of the pitch at full back. I think he starts at left back. And I think whenever Trippy needs a rest, he'll go back to right back and we'll bring in target, stroke, burn, whichever one you want. And, and you've got to remember as well, Craig, Craig Hope earlier on said we had a £75 million budget. So I, <laughs> I'm not sure, you know, Craig Hope, I. I He's a little bit wry with his com with his. It might have been more what he was told. To be fair, well, I've seen thirty-five plus add-ons from Sky. I've seen forty plus add-ons from Talksport. I mean, obviously Newcastle. I mean, they could announce an undisclosed fee again. Uh, we don't know, but I, I, I'm with Billy on this one. I just can't see Livermento signing to sit on the bench, not for that kind of money. Um, Twenty-three was banded around as an original bid, but. Southampton have always stuck by 40. They've always said 40 all along that they will not sell him for less than 40 million. Um, now, this probably had something to do with the uh, the sell on that they've got with Chelsea and stuff like that that they've had to pay. Um, but I, I really do think that, that they've, they've had to pay bu big bucks for him. And if they're going to pay big bucks for this guy, I think he's got, I think he's in to start, not to sit on his ass. I just can't see it. But then again, I mean, you're right with Anthony Gordon, Alex. You're right. We paid forty for him, and he. It, but I think it's a it, it's a little bit different this for me than I'm Anthony. Not saying Gordon. you're wrong at all. I don't no, no, think I, either I could of you're be wrong. wrong. I'm just, I'm just putting saying my opinion that, out there. You know, it's um, you've got to factor in these other other things that have happened, such as the Gordon transfer and how he was progressed into the team. And but likewise, even though Livermento is considerably younger than Anthony Gordon, I feel like Livermento is a lot more mature. Um, in his game and his reading of the game, um, when to go, you know, his interception statistics are really, really high, which we always use as a nice metric of intelligence. Um, it's not about the tackles and the aggression. If you know where to be, you can read the game. You, you tend to have a higher interception statistic. And he's he's already there in a lot of metrics, to be fair. He's a very clever player. Um, and he, he's not done too bad since he's come back from injury either, to be fair. A lot I mean, of people are saying Trippier playing left back. That's I don't think that's in the question. We've seen him play for England at left back. He always looked like he didn't really fit there. And also he's had injuries as a result of him playing there. Twisted shoulder and, and hips and stuff. Yeah, because he jumped the wrong way, didn't he? Because he yeah. it was an unnatural position for him and he hurt his shoulder. I mean, Barry says there, unless Trippi is going to play left back, I don't understand why we need another right back. Um, there's a possibility, you know, there's still plenty of time in the window that one of these right backs that we have may go out. You know, you, you look at Mankio, he's he's... He did generate a bit of interest from other parts of Europe over the summer. We don't know what's going to happen to him. Emil Kraft, does Eddie still want him around? You know, is he high up the pecking order? We don't know. 
Um, but certainly, I, I think Livermento gives us options, doesn't he? Because, you know, he can play on the left or right, but he's also got a bit more, you know, what I'm saying is, Alex, maybe a bit more pace on that left-hand side when we come up against, you know, flat-out pace against other sides. He, he, he could be used on the left. Potentially, yeah. I still don't think that's why he's been signed. I think he's been signed because it was because he's available, because he fits the DNA of the team, the project going forward. He mm. ticks every box and he's available right now. Probably he's probably not going to be available again. So mm. we've gone, eh, we're gonna need to we're gonna need to sort this out soon anyway, with Trippier being 33, Ashby not quite being ready yet, the left back's not quite being where we want. And they've gone, right, this fullback is available now. He's not going to be available next summer because of the whole uh, the Chelsea buyback and, and different people, somebody else might go in for him. So I think it's a case of he's available. We've gone for him now, even though he wasn't specifically what we were going for in mm. this window. Because the club have come out and said that. If they find, you know, the money's there. If they find the right buy and the right person, the right fit, they might just go for it. They've said this before. They've been very open about that. And I feel like this is the case of... He's not necessarily, yeah, he's not the perfect left back that we need. He's not a Fabian Cher understudy or challenger, but mm. it was a really, really good mould for the squad going forward. We're going to need him or somebody like him in 12 to 18 months anyway, and he was available now. So I think we've just pulled the trigger really early. I think that's the situation. I'm not sure we've gone over the, over the I mean, top to it, sign him to play left back. Yeah, he probably he will play a bit of left though, back. Doesn't he? But, I mean, he's, you know, he's, he's, he's very, very highly rated. Um, Extremely, yeah. th th this isn't just a guy that's coming in and uh, we'll see how he gets on. He's, he's, he is uh, very much um, already sort of connected to the England setup and, and things like that. And I think that a lot of people say he's got a very big future. But um, Clarky says that Livermento can play midfield too, apparently. I don't think we've signed him for that. Um, I, think we're, we're, I think we're pretty much done in midfield. Um, which can is I why make I've a point all... about that? About yeah, his, yeah, yeah. his position. I mean, who was it that just said that? I agree. DK35 just mentioned this, and it's a very good point. The fact that Carl Walker Peters was, was the one moved to the left to accommodate Livermento staying mm. on the right. Um, is that because Carl Walker Peters is extremely versatile, or is that because Livermento isn't, you know, isn't as capable on the left? Or, you know, there's there's a number of different options you could go down for that. Um, but it's interesting the fact that they've chosen to keep. Tino on the right and and move Carl Walker Peters to the left for Southampton. Not, not, not all of the time. Well. Not all of the time. Not all of the time. I, I hate to add mm. Tino Livermento played for Southampton at least ten times on the left left hand side of defence. At least. Yeah, I, I, I'm again. I'm not sure on quantity. So you they float. Right they there. float. They float around, don't they? Let's be honest. We've seen Perot play at left back with his right back for Southampton, and Walker mm. Peters has played at right back. They they yeah, they, 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 they float around. their four backs yeah. around, don't they? They do. They like to do that. But listen. The bottom line is he, he 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 can he can play there if he's needed. Now, what Eddie Howe's plans are for him, I guess we will have to wait and see on that one because you know only Eddie will know what he wants to do with him. But he's certainly an option there. And you know, for me, I said a few weeks ago that I thought Mark Target might get the the go ahead at left back to start the season. Um, I'm not sure anymore. I'm I'm just genuinely not sure anymore who is going to start left back and, and we we probably won't know I guess until we line up against Villa. Uh, but I tell you what we have got now though, Billy, is we've got a hell of a bench. You know we were yeah. talking about last season bringing quality off and replacing it with quality. We've got that now. That's what we needed. We needed to have a choice of five players you could bring on each trust. I think we've got more of that now, which is what we need, especially with Champions League football. You know the extended kind of fixture list that we'll have next season. Mm -hmm. We could never go and go into it with three on the bench. He trusts, and if they get injuries apart from that, took a couple of kids on. Yeah, so it's got the added, the added kind of bonus of, of a couple of the young kids coming up and showing real promise. Absolutely, um, you know. So excellent, excellent, excellent stuff for Eddie Howe. He's, he's managed to build a squad mm -hmm. in eighteen months, really, and now he's got a depth on the bench as well, which is great for us. Yeah, uh, Julie uh, says uh, apparently he can play right centre back uh, also, according to the Athletic article. I mean, he did it when he was younger. Yeah, I'm not yeah. sure it's where he's going to be playing. Uh, Ian Fleming, thank you for the five pound super chat. He says, "See, people are saying on social media we are ruining football with our spending. Laughable, just jealous." I think. Yeah. Look, I mean, these guys. There's a lot of people on social media now fishing for responses from Newcastle fans. Um, to be honest, 
I'm not responding to it anymore because it, it's just pathetic. They're looking to wind the Newcastle fans up. If you look at the other teams spending, you know, the amount of money Liverpool have spent, Chelsea has spent, uh, other Man United have spent, you know, it's 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 multi millions, you know, and we've got we've got Bruno in for 40 million, we've got Isak for 60, we've got uh Livramento now for 40, we've got Tonali in for whatever it was. Was, it, was that 40 as well? I can't remember back then. Um, so, you know, we've done some exceptional shopping because some of these players um, are probably going to be worth a hell of a lot more in a few years because we've bought them at the right time when they're really young and they're still not hit their true talent yet, which is extremely exciting for us as fans, Alex. Yeah, I mean, you just talk about our spending. Um so transfer marks got us down as spending 116 million euros so far on outgoings. Of mm-hmm. course, that doesn't include um, the Tino Livramento signing. Yeah. And curiously, the average age of the incomings is 23.6. And I think Livramento's um, signing would bring that down as well, which is which is really nice to see. Um, so what what's that in euros? Probably 50 million euros. So that would be what 100 and, 150, 160 million euros. Um, in, in the window, obviously that's that's extremely that's much higher than we than was originally touted. Um, what was your second point, Paul? Well, I can't remember now. But anyway, um, <laughs> Liver, uh, Paul makes it, Paul Tully makes a good point here. Livermento was twenty years old, so it's a little puzzling that with uh, Ashby at the club, just when we would uh, when would Ashby get a chance? Because Tino will be in his place at the same time. I mean, Billy, how how do you think young Ashby's feeling now? He's gone out to obviously Swansea. I mean, the club have the club confirmed it today. I'm not too sure, but he's been training with Swansea. But the the it's a little puzzling, isn't it? Because I, how do you think he'll be feeling right now? He's going to have to get years' experience when he comes back. He could be in the same quality as as what Tino Livermento is. But mm. again, Tino Livermento can play at left back. I keep emphasising that point. There's room in the, in the side for both of them. Well, clone lad saying it could be a right wing alternative to Miggy. I mean, he's got the skill set to be a right winger. Um, I'm not sure if it's where we'll shoehorn him, but I'd say okay, maybe shoe, shoehorn's the wrong word because I think he, I think he's got the, he's got what it what it takes to be a, a winger. But um, I think everybody's coming out with quite lud- ludicrous suggestions. To be honest, I think we've signed him as a fullback. Let's use him as a fullback for now. We're not playing him as a DM, as a six, as a winger. <laughs> Let's just calm down. <laughs> We're not putting a goalkeeper jersey on I don't, him. I, I, Stick I, listen, him as a fullback. I don't think um, for any second. Uh, I think ninety nine percent of Newcastle fans will will say that they, they don't expect them to be in midfield because the, we we saw overrunning midfield now with with yeah. real talent for the first time in a very long time. <clears throat> so I don't think we're buying a defender to slot into midfield at certain no. points. Is C- can I bring a point on what you said about Ashby as well? Just the the question you asked to Billy about the difference between the two. Yeah, just one uh, second because we've had five. Uh, Five memberships again gifted by Keith Dice. So um, I didn't see who got the memberships, but thank you very much, Keith, again for your amazing generosity, mate. That is so kind. Uh, thank you so much for that. Uh, sorry, Alex, go on. Yeah, it was just about. Um, so Billy made a great point uh, last week about Ashby. About and I, we all noticed this. About he sometimes committed himself to challenges on wingers a little bit too early. He needs to learn that side of the game. And that is the polar opposite of um, Livermento. Livermento's, mm-hmm. if you again, if you read the Athletic article, it, it outlines that completely. And that he reads the game so much better than that. He's already learned that. He knows when to go, when not to go. That's why his interception metrics are so high. Um, he already knows that part of the game. He is streets ahead of Ashby. And it's not an insult to Ashby. Livermento's had came through the Chelsea Academy. Um, he had a full season in the Premier League under Southampton against some great wingers in the league and he did very, very well. Ashby's not had that. Ashby didn't come through the Chelsea Academy. He didn't get a full season in the Prem. Um, it's not fair to compare the two and it's not that Ashby's not a good player. It, it's it's comparing chalk and cheese. It's not fair. Ashby could be amazing. He he just deserves and requires that time to go and learn. Um, and I, it's, it's not really fair to compare them, I don't think, because it's two different situations. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've got another new member, uh, Fubar Steve. Uh, welcome to Members Club, uh, Steve. Thank you so much uh, for your support. Really do appreciate that. Uh, Tom says, uh, where will Dan Byrne play if Livermento plays on that side of the pitch? Well, I, he won't be in the 11. I, I, he'll be on the bench. Um, but listen, as Alex has alluded to, he may well just start with the two left backs he's already got, either Target or Byrne. 
Um, and then if needed, you know, if the games keep coming or injuries, things like that, which do happen in a season, of course, we know uh, injuries can deplete a, a squad. But what we're doing now is we, we are building a very, very good squad. Um, I was actually hoping that Livermento might be available uh, at the weekend for the Seller Cup. They might get everything tied up before then. But uh, looking at the reports, he's going to, he's traveling up, uh, I believe tonight, um, and the medical would take place over the next few days and an announcement could come Monday. Um, it would be nice if he was involved in the squad, Billy, for the Cup. Yeah, of course it would. Um, it'd be similar to the Harvey Barnes deal, wouldn't it? You know, yeah. Stepping straight in and getting maybe a game off the bench one of the days. We'll see how the, how, how the deal progresses. I don't think it's too far away. I think the personal terms are already agreed. I think it's just a case of medicals and, and signing. That's it. But, you know, with us, it, we never do anything quick, sharp, do we? It could be could be Monday before it starts. So, Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a brilliant signing. It, it really is. And it's a signing that, you know, we, we, we've been talking about it on sort of transfer shows and things like that, about where we could improve. And we know that a fullback was needed. Um, he's not specifically the left back that we've all spoken about. Um, but it's a, it, another player through the door. And Alex, another English player. Um, you know, we, we, are, we have got a good, well, a, a lovely amount of English players in that squad now. Yeah, I mean, homegrown. Um, he's been part of the the youth setup for, for England for a long time, all the way back to the England under 15s. Um, he was part of the under 21s qualifying campaign, in which obviously England won the Euros, um, the under 21s team. A few no, uh, reputable um, assists for Anthony Gordon um, when they played together at, at youth level for England. So he already knows one of the lads. Um, it might be a, a partnership that we'll see in black and white stripes, hopefully. Um, but he's, yeah, he's got massive pedigree, massive potential. Um, some of the lads he came through with at Chelsea, the fact he's been involved with the national setup since he was under under 15, you know, Billy's already alluded to the fact of some of the scouting reports at Chelsea. It, it's well known that this kid is special. Um, he's not good. He's special. A lot of people have called him that. Um there's a reason that there's still an option for Chelsea to go back in from next season because they wanted to keep that option open in case, you know, they wanted to go back in from in the future because they knew he's was amazing. Um, yeah. Well, I've, yeah, I've just, I've just up. put a poll up um, and, and basically just asked, where do you guys think Livermento will start this season? Right back, left back or the bench. So it'll be interesting to get your, uh, you guys involved in that poll and see what you think. Um, and we'll leave that up for around 20 minutes or so for you guys to, to have a go. And uh, very interesting to see what you guys say, where you think you'll start. Uh, Nick says, uh, seeing as we are desperate for a left back and centre half, 30 plus million for another right back seems strange. I mean, look, we spoke we spoke about this before we even brought a left back in, didn't we? I mean, sorry, uh, uh, Livermento in and another right back. We've always spoke about how many players we seem to have at right back and who can play there, you know, because... You know, I know he hasn't been used there a lot under Eddie Howe, but Jacob Murphy can also play right back. God help us, but he, he can. Uh, we've I got, mean, he was all right the other day. Well, he was, yeah. Uh, but we've got you know Man the there, goal. Emil Kraft. We've got we did have Ashby, but he's gone on loan. But we've got Trippier there as well. So there's still a selection of players in that right back position, and now we've brought another one in. So I can understand some fans looking around and thinking, yeah, this is a bit weird. You know, what what is his plans? And um, well, one of them will go, won't they? Either well, Mankio I, I or believe so. will go, one of the two. Well, I believe it'll be Mankio because I, I did. Th there was quite a bit of interest in Mankio at the start of the transfer window. It did say that uh, quite a few European teams, mainly Spanish, were looking at uh, Mankio to, uh, to come in. But obviously, we don't know. There may have been inquiries for Mankio, but obviously, it, you know, nothing's been. Uh, released to the press or anything like that. and But the, the rumours of Mankio leaving have died down a lot. Uh, they may start up again now we've come back from the from the pre-season trip, Billy. It may start the ball rolling again. Yeah, so, I mean, teams were looking for a right back, whether it be lower league, Premier League, whether it be La Liga, maybe even top half of the championship, you don't know. Um, mm -hmm. And need a right back, you'd be a, a great signing, signing Javier and Keo. You know, he's a, he's, a, yeah. he's a satisfactory right back. He's, he's a good average... Premier League right back. Um, never going to be a starter for a side to play in the Champions League, but you know, he's an excellent professional. Never let us down, really. Um, yeah, I yeah. think he'd be a good bot. Sorry for somebody. Uh, and now that we've, we've added to our full-back roster, 
one's going to go. I imagine with Kraft being injured, he wouldn't be the one to leave. So I imagine it'd be Mankia, yeah. I mean, I, I don't think Eddie Howe wants to do this, but I've seen a few comments now coming in in the chat thinking, you know, does Eddie Howe, you know, how he likes his inverted wingers, does he want to start playing inverted fullbacks? I don't think so for a second because I, I, I don't think inverted fullbacks work at all. Um, you know, we're going to be can stuck. work, but we're not well, going to play. Sometimes they can, but you're going to be stuck in the same situation as, let's say, for example, Miggy. If they haven't got an alternative foot, it becomes a little bit of a problem because you use them inverted wingers, inverted fullbacks, so they can, you know, cut in or they can use the the, the foot on the outside, which Miggy's working at. Let's be honest, we've seen him do it a few times in preseason this year. Um, so he is trying to, you know, use that right foot to get crosses into the box. But I just don't see Eddie Howe using inverted fullbacks, Alex. Well, no, it doesn't suit the shape or the build-up. He's not played that in preseason. We've not got the personnel to play that. Uh, no, <laughs> is the answer to that. Yeah. Otherwise, we'd have seen Burn or Target on the right, <laughs> which mm, I don't think see, would be a fun experiment. There. We did see Target there for about five minutes, didn't we, in the Chelsea game at home last year. Yes, hence five minutes, Billy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. sod it. Let's just put Dummett as a right back. See what happens. Oh, Jesus. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, that's so sad. Um, Could have kept Matty. You, don't. Don't, Billy. Don't. Uh, Mark Mullins, thank you very much for your five pound super chat, buddy. Uh, very kind. He says, I think Eddie will give it a few games uh, with him making a sub appearance and then move trips to left back and live Remento as right back and burn on the bench. So he thinks he's going to do similar to what he did with some of the new signings, bleed him in on the bench and then put him in. But do you think, this is a strange question you ask, but do you think if there is plans to move Trippier to left back, do you think Eddie's already had a chat with Kieran Trippier before this signing was made and said, look, if we get Livramento in, will you play as a left back? Are you comfortable playing that position on a, a permanent level? Mm, no. no, definitely not. We've seen how, how awkward he is in England. And it's been a bane in my life that Southgate only picks one left back in the England squad. And if he's kind of Luke Shaw's not ready to play, Trippier gets shoved out there. Looks so uncomfortable there. As I say earlier, he's, he's, he's hurt himself playing there just by jumping wrongly or whatever. He's in, nah, it's just ruins part of his game also. He doesn't yeah. get as far forward. So, absolutely not. I mean, like you say, Kieran Trippier is, what, 33 now? So he's getting no younger. Um, Billy, you, you have been worried about Trippier's pace in the past. Um, you know, I mean, look, this guy is still a quality, quality footballer, Kieran Trippier, and I have no problem with him being in the starting eleven at all. I think he's a leader. He's somebody we do need on the pitch because he, he's very level-headed and he, he's very good at getting players away from the referee during any problems and things like that. And I think people, there's a lot of players on that that pitch look up to Kieran Trippier. There's no doubt about it. Um, but he is getting older, and unfortunately, age catches up with everybody. Um so is it a case of, like you say, Alex, is it a case of, you know, Kieran Tripp, you're playing a certain amount of games, Livermento playing the, the, the rest of them? Because Kieran, being 33, will not get a, you know, he can't physically play every game. Yes, that is 100% what I think. 100%. Mm. You've got to remember, how, how many times last season did we not use all five substitutes? Countless times. This gives us an option if we're two, three goals up in a game, regardless of opposition, we can just bring Trippier off mm -hmm. because we've generally got enough. We don't need to make that many substitutions, especially if we're already in front. Um, and I, I don't want to set the expectations too high, but the, the minimum expectation is that we're going to be winning a lot more games than we've done previously. I, I would like us to maybe at least match the amount of wins last year as this year, because we did get a lot of draws. Um, so by that note, you'd imagine there's got to be, what, eight, nine, ten fixtures where Livermento can come on as a substitute because we can just rotate. And then that doesn't include any cup or Champions League fixtures he wants to start or can start. And then any Premier League games that Eddie Howe wants him to start. You know, we got we got lucky last year. Trippier played, he made 37 starts. That's, I feel like for a 32 slash 33 year old um, who, had a, who had an injury the previous season, I feel like we got incredibly lucky. Trippy didn't get injured. Um, we can't bank on that happening again next year. Mm. So 
rotation is key. We've got to manage Trippier. Not that Trippier is injury prone because he's not, but we've got to manage Trippier no, the same way. He has way had one bad injury, of course, with, since he signed for us. And then, and then but that um, was that was um, that wasn't him snapping. That was no, it wasn't. No, like literally treading on him. Um, but we but did miss him. Yeah, and I think we should just manage his minutes the same way we've been managing Callum Wilson's minutes. We've got to try and squeeze every last drop out of the orange or lemon or whatever he is. Um, yeah. Piece of fruit, because we're going to have to try and get every last bit out of him. I, I can imagine he's going to become, in a few years' time, what Matt Ritchie is now. He, he will slowly reduce his minutes and just be a huge influence on the team. Yeah. Um, you know, but yeah, hopefully substitutions we can take advantage of that because we really didn't last year because we just didn't have the depth, did we? Mm. So, Yeah, it, it's a good point. And it, it, I, I, it's nice that when they read the team out before a game and we'll have a very strong 11 and then you look at the bench and think, wow, you know, we're not afraid anymore of of, of yeah. real subpar players coming onto the pitch because we will, we will have that quality there. And God forbid anything happened to Trippier. I mean, Livermento is a hell of a guy to have stand in. Uh, a lot of people are saying in the chat that they don't understand the Harrison Ashby situation. They don't understand um, why we bought him in the first place. We shipped him out on loan, and then we brought a player who's a long term. similar similar age to right back as well. Uh, but you need, I mean, I've seen this in the chat as well. But you you do need a strong, well, two players in every position, shall we say, who are quality you know i mean look what i mean they're further down the road than us but you look what man city have done you know pep brings players in and he's always got quality in each position to change it if he needs to and i think that's where newcastle united and eddie Howe want to thrive moving forward bill 100 percent, yeah and, and the fact we've got an english base as well it, it, you know when it comes on to salon deals again we're gonna we're gonna if we are gonna, gonna sell we'll get a premium for that too so it's good economic sense it's good football in sense Covers every kind of eventuality, injury wise, and, and it'll kind of keep us sort of that top of the top end of the league where we want to be. Uh, it's, it's just mm -hmm. perfect sense all the way around from the club, from the manager, from the from Dan Ashworth and everyone. It's just a brilliant signing to get a young English right back to back up another young English right back. Ashby's an uncut diamond. He's gone up to Swansea now. Hopefully, he'll come back well polished and look a better player for it. And then we'll have three quality full backs. One of them will play left back. I'm certain of it. Um, yeah. But maybe next season we'll go and get a, an established left back. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, Julio, this is an English channel, so if you're going to uh, type in in Spanish or whatever that is, uh, then we won't read it out. So um, you know, you, you can write in English because you put "how man" at the end of your message. So whatever it said, speak in English. Uh, anyway. Um, Simon says, Livermento, Miley, Anderson, it adds depth to the squad as they don't take up a place in the 25-man squad numbers. Very good point. Um, you know, th th that all needs to be taken into account as well because, you know, we've got so much depth now that, that we can have a 25-man squad and still have some players not affected by that, which is, which is brilliant. Can I, just, can I just outline what our... I'm just thinking about our potential bench. So, theoretically, if we play Barnes... Isak, Almiron as our front three, let's say. Mm -hmm. We could have a bench um, that, that is... Uh, we could have a bench that's got Wilson, Gordon, Anderson, uh, Miley, Willock, Longstaff, Livramento. Like, that's seven. And then maybe like a Dubravka as well. Depends on what competition in, we're in as to how many bench slots we get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's that's not a bad bench. That's, that's very good. We could bring five players on from that bench. That's not bad at all. That's rather, rather good. It it is rather exciting about the bench, like I've just said. You know, it it you look and you think that there's still some talent gonna miss out altogether, you know, and not be on the bench either. You know, we're we're, we're starting to get to that stage now where the quality of player that's coming through the door is very exciting. And I don't oh, personally think Murphy, we're sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, yeah, there's a lot. <laughs> exactly, uh, but, but I don't think we're finished in the window, Billy. I think that I think they do need cover at centre back. I don't think he's going to put all his apples on 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 Lascelles. I really don't. Um, he may do for for certain games, but I do think we need another centre back. Hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely. We need some pace in the centre of the defence. No doubt about it. Um, who that will be? Who knows? We may have we may have reviewed him already on this channel. Who knows? We just don't know. Mm. My guess is someone in France, but who's, who knows? 
Interesting. Well, the uh, Benucci's been mentioned plenty of times over the last couple of days as well. I mean, look, if we bring a, a, a quality centre back in, now that we've, you know, I mean, Livermento, let's be honest, he hasn't been announced yet. We just hope his medical goes well and, and, and things like that because he has had a very nasty injury. But, you know, surgery these days, I think, you know, even though it was horrific, he'll get through his medical. Um, we bring in the centre back. What are your ratings on the transfer window after that? Do you think it's been a very, very good window? Who are we asking, the Billy? Only, the, only is... the only thing that'll stop it for me is is kind of not getting rid of if, the Deadwood. If we can get rid of that as well, you're looking mm-hmm. at an eight, nine, ten, nine, nine out of ten for me. Signings wise, yeah. it's an eight, without a doubt. Mm-hmm. Alex? Yeah. If if we get if we also get in a right sided centre half to challenge Fabian Share. Um, I think it takes it to an eight or a nine, like Billy says. And then additionally, if we can move on players like Hayden, Hendrick, Fraser, that's what takes it to a 10 out of 10. So by all, to be fair, a lot of people were panicking. A lot of people have been panicking in the last few weeks about the transfer window. I still feel like we're on course to have a 10 out of 10. It's it's very possible. Uh, it depends what a lot of people are, are, in, are still in two minds about players like Harvey Barnes. Fair enough. You're allowed your opinions on that. But I feel like those four four first team signings in, plus all the academy additions like Minter and a few others, mm-hmm. and then on top of that, if we can get a few a few of the Deadwood out, and let's not forget the forgotten man here, Garan Kual is still kicking her out wherever the hell he may be. Well, yeah, um, nobody knows where he is. Uh, I, I just don't know, uh, guys. We've got over fourteen hundred watching at the minute, so thank you so much. Uh, for joining us tonight. Uh, please do give it the thumbs up if you're enjoying the show. And of course, if you're new to the channel, uh, come and be part of this community by hitting the subscribe button. We're on the way to 23,000. With your help, we'll get there sooner rather than later. And of course, hit the notification bell, which will let you know when we go live or we upload any videos. And of course, you can donate to the channel like so many good people have already done so tonight by hitting that dollar sign at the bottom of the live comments. And you also get, obviously, your comment read out straight away as well. We've had another super chat, four ninety nine from Peter Joy. Thanks, Peter. He says Ashby will turn out to be an FFP signing. Bring him in for three million and then sell for ten. Interesting, interesting point that. Uh, if if he doesn't succeed, we can probably get a lot more than three million for him. But time will tell. Uh, let's not forget as well as Ian says, uh, Livermento has won Player of the Year in two successive seasons at two different clubs. Of course, he won it at Chelsea and he won it at Southampton, and then unfortunately the injury happened. So this guy is... is I think a, it was at youth level at Chelsea. But yeah, yeah, but it's it's still, you know, I mean, it, it was at youth level, but it's still. Uh, Annie, good evening to you. I haven't seen you in a while. I hope you're well, matey. Um, not sure how Southampton have managed to get 40 million for him as a championship side. Because he's, he's a not championship a championship player. player, though, is he? Yeah, that's the difference. He's not, a, he's not a championship player. And Southampton, you know, they know they've got the quality there. There's a couple of others. Um, I believe Lavi is uh, wanted by, is it Liverpool? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and they will pay big money for him because he's a Premier League player. Um, I mean, obviously, Livermento wasn't part of Southampton's demise either. No, he wasn't. No. Um, which is a good point as well. So it, that's why the money's so high. But he's also English, Annie. And, and I think, you know, we know as English fans that English players tend to go for a lot more money than what, you know, the uh, the Europeans do or international players in general. Um, I know some of them are, you know, big prices that have made the names somewhere, but Livermento is only 20 year old. I think you could get a 20 year old right back, probably around the same skill set as Livermento, um, a lot cheaper in, in Europe or around the world. But the fact he's English, it's it's massive to Newcastle United to, to keep the English uh, players up there. You know what I mean? So it's it's... It's difficult, but 40 million, I still don't think it's 40. I think it's around 30, 35. Um, but then the add-ons, you, you just don't know. Um, Kevin says it'd be interesting to see some of the lineups this weekend at the Seller Cup. Indeed. I'm looking forward to it, actually, because uh, it doesn't matter which side we put out. We're going to have quality players in both sides. So over both well, tiers. Well, I mean, one of the back lines is going to include Dummett and Lascelles in it. So let's not go that far. Oh, Alex, you've always got to, you know, I'm, I'm I'm, trying here to be positive and optimistic. And then you bring me down like a brick hitting the sea. That's what Honestly. I'm here for. Sometimes I wish it was vodka in this damn bottle. Um, <laughs> but never mind. Uh, I mean, it looks like it is with the cap on. Thanks. 
<laughs> By the way, I've, I've seen a few comments coming in as to why I'm wearing a captain. I'd saying that I've I've had hair implants and stuff like that, and uh, or I'm hiding something. There's nothing going on. I just decided to wear a cap. Uh, end of story. So put all those rumors to bed. I haven't had a hair transplant. There's nothing going on with me head. I haven't I haven't got stitches. I haven't been hit over the head by anybody. It's you know, I'm fine. Thank you just for getting, your concern, though. Just getting down with the youth. I'm wearing a freaking cap. What? Everybody wears caps every day of the bloody week. Anyway, Bastiat says, the thing is, we have more pressing needs at the moment, but how we will address them now that we have bought this dude? The financial fair play BS has our ambitions asphyxiated. I like how he goes from dude to asphyxiated within about 10 words. Yes. The range uh, of vocab there is stunning. I love it. It's brilliant. Yes. <laughs> Uh, King Arthur Sorry, says we just need a centre back now, unless we're going with Lascelles. Well, there is the question that we raised not uh, not long ago. JB says great point regarding our bench, Paul. High intensity football requires a strong bench, mm. uh, but I think it's it's the youth as well, though, guys, isn't it? The, the fact that we've we're bringing players in who haven't even come near to hitting their potential yet, or the the best years of the career. We've got a lot of players there who are just hungry, really hungry to do well. It's not just yeah, that, it's, it's, the, it's the fact that we were lucky with injuries last season, if I'm being perfectly honest. We were, and yeah. we, we, we're not going to get that lucky again, I wouldn't have thought. We need depth this year. Yeah. Uh, being compared to Bale, uh, he was, but we mentioned this when we brought him up on the first transfer show, didn't we? I, I don't like, you know, when players or when people refer to him as always oh, the next this, he's the next that. Um I think that was the night that I saw that Man United fan say that Bruno Fernandez was just leagues above Zidane. Um, I think it's we brought that up. It, it, look, players are their own selves, right? Yes, you can you can say yeah, he, he plays a little bit like him, or he, you know, we often say that Joe Willock, for example, runs or has the persona on the pitch of Chris Waddle, like Chris Waddle used to, like he was lethargic, and but but as soon as Waddle got the ball, he was, you know, the pace was incredible. And Joe Willock's a little bit like that. But I wouldn't... I mean, look, if he's anywhere as good as Gareth Bale, then we've signed a superstar. There's no doubt about it. So, um, But let's not put that much pressure. He's still only 20, remember. We can't go out putting pressure on these players, Alex. You mentioned that a while ago with the likes of Lewis Miley. It's very important that we give these players time to to, to bleed in. You know, to, to Don't push them too hard. Well, I think it's a little bit different with Livermento, but the, the same logic still applies to a point. Livermento... You know, there was a bit more expectation. He came up in the academy. You know, you got Reese James at right back. Afiliqueta was still playing as a fullback in those sorts of times, um, and then he obviously moved to centre half. Um, you know, he grew up with when Musiala was still at the, the Chelsea academy. The expectations were significantly higher when he was was coming through that group. He, again, he's been at international level since he was at, at the under fifteen age group. Um, Miley's not been part of any of that. It's been very quiet, very humble in the youth setup. Now all of a sudden, it's it's a bit mental. Um, so it is a bit different to you know. I think Livermento is probably used to it a bit more. He's already got a full season in the Premier League. Miley's played a couple of preseason games, and everybody's going mad. Like, yeah. it, it is a bit different. I think Livermento can probably handle it a lot better. Hmm. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, by the way, happy birthday, Chippers. Uh, he's uh celebrating what did we say yesterday? Was he 55 or 60 today? I'm not sure, I can't remember. Uh, and still a virgin. Um, Jan says, uh, wait for it, 80 million pound new player coming in the next two days. Oh, god, oh, yeah, Jan, 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 Jan. <laughs> uh, Mandy, good evening, uh, good evening, lads, over the moon with this signing. Uh, but all the other teams have strengthened also, but this team is getting better slowly. Well, it's slow and good progress and that's what uh, me and dad said at the start of the takeover uh, and it, it's turning out like that because they didn't expect to finish fourth last season there's no doubt about it but have you guys seen that supercomputers uh... oh hang on a minute we've got another member Chris O'Neill welcome to members club thank you very much Chris uh, really appreciate your support buddy and welcome to the family uh, did you see the supercomputer um, yeah, predicted a on, second with what, like 84 points or something Absolutely, mental. Yeah, about seven, Ooh. six points ahead or seven ahead of third place. Who was top? Man City. What a load of bollocks. Yeah. <laughs> um... finish behind them. Fuck. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. It's a load of crap. <laughs> yeah. I know. But I think it's based on because, like, statistically, if you look at, I think it's down to the losses. 
when you factor in that last season, how many games did we lose? Four in the yeah. league. Well, this league says we're going to lose. This prediction says we're going to lose seven and still finish on eighty-four points. Yeah, but I mean that is a hell of a season. Drew, it's because we drew a lot last year. But I think yeah. they're factoring in. This is the thing with our statistics. It's it's getting skewed a lot because we were so hard to beat. It was what? It was City, Liverpool, and then the one Villa game. That was it. it was, I think it's maybe five, five losses. I don't know because we draw, we drew with City once. Uh, oh, Arsenal. and Arsenal. Yeah, Arsenal, yeah, Arsenal yeah, as well. Yeah. But it was only. only a handful of losses so that's really skewing our statistics when you look at things like that um so you've got to take it with a massive pinch of salt but alternatively i think we'll, we'll turn a lot of those draws into wins as well so i think we could end up i think we could end up losing more games next season and finishing on a higher points total it's very possible it's the reason man united finished above us mm, interesting uh ken mack says uh, just want to know what number he'll be playing uh I have no idea. I, I don't know whether Adam's been to the club shop. He, I know he's been to the club shop. I don't know whether he's done a video. He was for already it. in the club shop. Yeah, by he was. Accident. When the announcement dropped, yeah, he was like, oh, was. I'm already here. So, yeah. God forbid what number he's picked. Um, Len Simmons, thank you very much for your 499 super chat. He says, Paul, are you aware that your cap has off centre printing? Uh, a second Castoria cap, is it? Ha ha. Uh, no, it's it's Armani, mate. And uh, it's, it's in the right place. Don't worry. It's in the right place. Um, Bob says forty million pound on a player to sit on the bench. Ah, Bob, he's twenty year old man. He's got the whole career ahead of him. He, he, you know, I think it'll be very, very good if we see you know him play a few. He'll definitely start a few games this season. But as we've already alluded to, he will come on a substitute for Trippier. You know, th there might be games that we're winning. You know, with twenty minutes to go, winning quite comfortably. Why keep Trippier on the pitch? Save it, save his energy, save his uh, risking getting injuries, and, and play him. You know, and bring him on. He's, he's quality. Uh, a lot of people thinking that he's going to be number twenty-one, which is his number anyway, isn't it? So I think it's what Adam's gone for. Yeah, but Adam's we been don't... wrong twice quite recently. So let's. Yeah, Tonali's been a Sorry, bit Adam. of a well. The official squad numbers haven't been announced, have they? So you're looking at Tonali. He's played eight. He's played twenty. Anthony Gordon's played what eight, ten, twenty. You, I mean, it's bizarre. So we don't know what the actual squad numbers are yet. But I have a feeling, will they release them this weekend before the Seller Cup? With this, a week to go before the season? They've got to announce them shortly, haven't they, surely? Well, I don't, I don't know if the club are going to end up having a word with Adam and just saying, look, because we we've get we got like, as somebody's mentioned in the chat, there's like 100 people bought Tenali 20 based on Adam's video. He's, he's going to have to be careful. Yeah. Um, a lot of people are going yeah. to be unhappy. I know. Um, but look, I think I think Tonali's going to be number eight. I genuinely think that. Um, yeah, I agree. It, I think that it makes sense. Yeah, but he may play twenty. Who knows? He may he may like number twenty. He may want number twenty. But I guess the seller cup will give us a better idea of what the squad numbers are. I think because um, putting the two teams out, I don't think they'll be going one to it's eleven. Got six at the moment. Is it the cells? The cells. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's the wrong squad number for a centre half. Well, yeah, but I can't see the cells giving the number six up, to be honest. Unfortunately not. I, um, I, could, I could see, obviously, it saves a number, the fact that Bruno's always going to have 39. It helps the midfield. Yeah. Um, but I could see maybe when the cells goes, somebody somebody from midfield picking that six shirt up. Yeah, I mean, look, the cells probably one more season, isn't he? So, um have a look. Uh, Mason says, I'm happy with signing Livermento. Uh, I'm a bit paid off with Southampton and Russell Martin with taking ages with the deal. I love Russell Martin, but I'm a bit paid off with the handling of the deal. I don't think it was the manager, mate, Mason, to be honest. I, I think that's above him. You know, what, whatever sort of agreement is for uh, Livermento, I don't think the, the negotiations are with the manager. It's it's obviously the, um, the executive people at the club. So uh, that's the way I look at it anyway. I don't think uh, Russell Martin would have said you know, I, I want 40 million. Uh, end of uh, Mama Mama Stato. <laughs> is that is it? Yeah, I think she's changed the name. Ah, okay. Uh, well, there you go. Good evening to Mother Toon Stato. Um, Carl says, I doubt it'll be 40 million up front. We'll be paid across the contract like everyone else these days. Uh, not sure why people are concerned. Uh, Mark Mullins, thank you for another two pound super chat. He says, Do we know if they're televising the seller cup as yet? Uh, it hasn't been announced actually, and I'm, I'm a little concerned. Uh, because you know, we, we obviously want to bring you commentary, it will be televised, but whether it's televised to the right places or not, 
Um, we, we, listen, we, we've got many fingers in pies for, for, for bringing the commentary to you. So um, we will let you know as soon as possible. I mean, last season, they, they did it on NUFC TV, didn't they? Which was free the they weekend. Did. Yeah. Which Can I, I just say to the do. people in the chat, I am aware that squad numbers used to be different. I, I am very aware, but we're on about how it is nowadays. It has yes. changed. Sense of half used to be four, five or six, didn't it? One time. Indeed. Uh, apparently, I'm on the new Hunted on Channel 4. Is that back, is it? God, I'm one of my favourite programmes. Yeah, well, I'm not in it, Billy, all right? I'm not sitting here just you know, now. hiding from bloody <laughs> authorities. He's hiding in Sunderland, the last place they'd ever look for him. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> um, uh, JB says, Alex, rel relax. Dummy one two with Lascelles to score the winner in the Mate, Champions League. If Lascelles final. scores a winner in the Champions League final for us, the beard's going blonde as well. Wow. The whole lot goes blonde. It's not oh. happening. Interesting. He won't uh, be with. He won't be at the club when we win the Champions League, unless unless by some freak of nature, magical, ridiculous moment, somebody's found a magic lamp and we win the Champions League this season. I mean, we're in the competition, but can you imagine? I don't, well, I can imagine. I can't actually think of it happening, but I can imagine. Um, Nick says, um, he thinks Susan's bounced a gunk off Paul's head. No, I'm not nursing a bump or anything like that. So, uh, Josh says, uh, take care of him, lads. You've got yourselves a great young player. Uh, thank you, Josh. Uh, we will certainly look after him. Uh, Philip says, sorry, guys, just be, just got here. Been here in Trippier, can play left back and Tino on the right. Uh, Trippy was playing left back for England. Uh, Again, yeah, we've been th we, yeah. forty times. Mm, it, I, I don't think. Uh, yeah, uh, Lisa's evening. Paul, Alex, and Billy. Great news from the club. Another good signing. Uh, a few more to come in. Looking cool with your cap, Paul. Well, thank oh, you always, very there's much. One. Sorry, there's always one. <laughs> I'm biting my lip right now, Alex. You've I got a T-shirt with make a, make a wish on it. You want to pop that on? Make a fucking wish. <laughs> Why do I need to make a wish? Because, well, like that charity in America, they've all got caps on, ain't they? The, the kids that are, make a wish. Are you trying to say I'm disabled, Billy? No, 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 not at all. I'm just saying you, you've got to have a make a wish t shirt. <laughs> Look at him you know, twisted it. <laughs> I don't actually know why I have you two bastards on this show. It's got, I really it's got, don't. It's got a bit of just... wisdom now. Mate, you put you know, that on. You you knew it was coming. It's a cap. It's a freaking cap. That's all it is. It's a cap on somebody's head where you go out to anywhere during the day and you'll see people wearing caps. It's not a big deal. You're not it's out a cap. During the day, you're in your studio. Oh, listen. You look like Ming the fucking merciless. You can't see anything with that <laughs> stupid thing listen, on your chin, right? This is me with a with a with a Newcastle shirt on. No, you look like a bell end. Anyway, George Brown says, uh, "Why do people think a right back will play a left back? He's quality cover for trips." And we'll interchange with him during the season. Uh, unfortunately, you've agreed with Alex there, Chris. So um, I'm going to move on swiftly. Won't be long till Livermento is actually capped by England as well. Yes. Uh, why am I seeing steak emojis? I am not on raw meat. These two force me to lose my temper on numerous oh, occasions. Guys. Is there a cap emoji? Somebody's got to find it. <laughs> just that'll just cap things off if there is. Alex, you do realise that I am seeing you in a couple of days' time to punch you in the middle of the face. So next time you come so on the show, it. you will have two black eyes and a crooked nose to go with your Ming the Merciless beard. I'll wear a cap. You won't recognise me. Oh, I, you, you wear a cap. Ah, yeah, yeah. It's all, it's all right for everybody else to wear a cap. But yes, there's all the cap emojis coming in. Friggin' <laughs> thousands of them. Thank you very much, everybody. It's been a pleasure. Um, Mark Singleton says, Good to see the tune getting young talent in. Eddie must see something in the player. This is for the future direction. Uh, Paul Temple says, uh, Wow, how far this club has come already in such a short space of time uh, from hopelessness under Ashley to this uh, signing up and coming quality players, quality over quantity every time. Uh, yeah, Jordy Kev says, Adam got 21. So maybe, but Adam just doesn't always get it right. Insult think... in the chat, by the way. Sorry? You've just had the ultimate insult in the chat, by the way. The it's ultimate insult. Well, it's a compliment. It's dressed up as a compliment, but I think it's worse than any any swear word. Paul Paul Cap looks very good, very clop. Hmm. I didn't say it. it wasn't me. Hmm. 
Uh, JB says, Paul trying to be all fashionable when he is seven. Yuppie, I don't have to try and be fashionable, mate. I already am uh, compared to these two bellends. Um, Johnny Mex says, uh, we need to get Jimmy and the guys back on Mr. Banter between you all. Um, well, no. Uh, Jimmy's actually, they are still very much. Oh, look, he's disappeared. He's going to get a cap, hasn't he? He has gone to get a cap, I'm telling you. There is no doubt in my mind, Billy, that he is going to come back on camera in a cap. If it was a Barbie cap, I'll piss myself. Oh, oh look at him. He was... can't even get his green screen right, though. He looks like he's got an invisible cap on. Now, that is special, Alex. God, he's gone back 20 years, and he? He looks, like, he, looks, he looks like he's one of them that drives a Ford Fiesta ST on the beach. Oh, I literally big, can't make big, it. Big bore exhaust. <laughs> There you go. Anyway, let's uh, let's. Uh, um, Jack says, "Paul, take that cap off. I want to see that beautiful napper." No, uh, we've got a four ninety nine super chat in from Ray Atkins. He says, uh, "I think Livermento may play at right centre back. Sometimes he's almost six foot and decent in aerial duels. He's a much better ball player than the cells too." Not a bad shout. Not a bad shout. Let's have a look at the uh, the poll and uh, see what people are saying. If it opens up, there you go. Right, so I asked, where will Levermento play this season? And basically, uh, 30% have said right back, 40% have said left back, and 30% have said the bench. You couldn't get a difference of opinion if you tried with that bloody poll there. There's no no big result, guys. Mm. It's almost a third each, isn't it? But... Mm. It's two-thirds of you are going to be wrong. <laughs> maybe, maybe, all, maybe all of them if he plays a centre, right centre back. Yeah, can you imagine that? Yeah, he started, he started uh, right centre back, and then uh, everyone's uh, out of it. Uh, Stanley says he's looking forward to the Amazon documentary due out soon. Absolutely, I think it's going to be a cork of that. By the way, uh, absolutely brilliant to watch. Um, I've, I've just skipped the bottom of the comments because there's too many caps. Um, <laughs> uh, is that an East Seventeen cap? Says the clone lad. Uh, Nothing wrong with these 17. Nothing wrong. Stay another day. Stay now, stay now, stay now. Yep. Billy, you just ruined it. Like, but never I've mind. got the 17 cap, probably 17 cap. Have you? Yeah. I'm dreading to think what he's putting on here. Oh, he's got a sat. Why? Why? <laughs> That's concerning that you've not moved that since December, Billy. Yeah. <laughs> it's still on your table. You have a Santa Claus hat on no, it. in August. There you go. Cause me dick up. Oh, dear. Oh. No, uh, uh, I like coffee says there's a merch idea. TDR caps. Well, we were going to get them, actually. Susan! <laughs> uh, Tom says, uh, just need some sovereigns and chains from Argos, Alex. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Lisa's come on, Billy. Where's your cap? Well, he's just put his Santa hat on. Um, uh, Jan says, Billy, don't even go there if you're thinking about a cap. The uh, only person who wore a cap in, my, in this house was my ex wife. Oh. <laughs> no, no, no. And she wouldn't cap for Holland either. Billy, shut it. <laughs> Are um, we going to talk about the the documentary yet? Yeah, go on. I, I mean, look, it looks very exciting, doesn't it, to be honest? It looks extremely exciting. Uh, and we're actually going to get a, you know, sort of a an insight into what Eddie's like in the dressing room, how the players respond to him, things like that. So I think it'll be, I think it'll be fantastic. I just love how self-aware they are. The fact that the, the the second clip they've chosen is is directly responding to all the time-wasting narrative, saying, hmm... No, let's play quickly and beat them 2 0. And we did it. So it's completely PP'd any of that stupid nonsense narrative that they were trying to push. Um, it's just great because they've been they've been at it in force with all these new um technical area changes. They've been using us as the example constantly. Um, you know, making an example of us in the media. Uh, it's just funny. It's great. We're, we're gonna get some positive um it's, it's, it's a little bit rare, actually. Although it is a bit weird that Gabby Agbon Lahore is is brown nosing us a bit. Yeah, I'm a bit confused I've seen by a few that. Comments about uh, Gabby Agbon Lahore in the chat. He said he wouldn't be surprised if we won every single home game in the Champions League group stage. Mm. I mean, he does realise that we might get like Bayern and Real Madrid in the, in our group, right? Is is he is he is he sleeping okay? Well, um, clearly not. Um, 
Shane Henry says, I've just tuned in. Why is Paul wearing a cap? For the good and good. I... <laughs> uh, Anthony Tucky, good evening, buddy. Uh, Paul, this show is class in a glass from Tucky. Tucky's got his fair share of hats as well. He likes his hockey tops as well, does Tucky. But I hope you're well tonight, buddy. And thank you for tuning in again. Um, Christian Frisbee says, uh, the cap, Paul, I've just accidentally posted this on Loaded. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure the lads will wonder what the hell's come up on the screen. Um, yeah, I'll yeah. Have to speak to them later and uh, tell them, uh, do apologize for cap emojis just randomly appearing on your show. Uh, Nikki says, hi, guys. Love the show. Can you tell me when the two next matches? Cheers. Saturday. Come on. Saturday. Um, Jason's just posted a load of Santa emojis. I mean, I never thought I'd see them in uh, at this time of year. August. Um, Simon says, uh, it always makes us laugh, Paul, when you say you've just put a poll up. Uh, well, let's put it this way. It's the only poll I put up these days. Uh, that didn't sound right at all. Uh, I... <laughs> let's, uh, let's... <laughs> hey, let's swiftly move on. Um, uh, Secret Carpet was saying, Alex was seeing that the maxi. Uh, stay now, stay now, stay another day. <laughs> yeah, but exactly. did you see his, his goal the other day as well? Uh, yes. I did, I did yeah. feel a bit sorry for him in that stadium. It's a bit of a, a bit of a step down stadium wise, but the goal was nice. You could see that they're not on his level at all. He just powered through about four people and slotted in the bottom corner. Indeed. Just a different standard. Um, Mawson says, Paul, the cap is great because you have fashion sense, Mawson, okay? You are you are obviously in the world of fashion and appreciate good fashion when you see it. All it is is a bloke sitting here with a goddamn cap on. And Alex looks like a teenage thug. Uh, Fubar Steve says, uh, can we get a TTR community Christmas party organized at the uh, Seller Stack Fan Zone this year? Oh, that would be... Uh, That's a great that shout. Interesting. Yeah, it is, certainly is. Um, right. Uh, I have nothing else to say tonight uh, because, quite frankly, I'm offended. Um, so, uh, Distracted Hodgson says, how long does it take uh, to wind that awning out, Paul? Uh, we're not going there. Right. That is it for tonight, guys. Uh, obviously, a lot of chat about Livermento. It's been absolutely fantastic. Still over 1,400 with us. Uh, you guys are absolute legends. Thank you so much to all your super chatters and, of course, the new members. Uh, and welcome to all the uh, new subscribers as well. Uh, we will finish off the show uh, with our mascot uh, because I feel we need it. Uh, because I have a feeling that Daisy is going to have a cap on it very shortly. So we'll play the old, the old school Daisy. Enjoy. Get those cow emojis in the chat, guys. Hundreds and hundreds of cow emojis. That's what we love to see. Um, but so just for the did... funny as well, if anybody if anybody does go to load it after we finish, go and put caps and cows in the in the comments. Yeah. It'd be hilarious. Let's just put loads of cows and cap emojis everybody in Loaded's going... chat. Because uh, <laughs> Daz will have a he'll have a heart attack. He'll not know what's going on. You think there's been some kind of uh, problem with the Irish broadband? <laughs> so it would be hilarious um, to to do that. So if you're going off to watch Loaded now, guys. Get yourself over there and put loads of uh, emojis in the chat for cows and caps, and they will have not a clue. But tell them it was Alex's idea because he said it first. Um, I've also just seen somebody say that my eyes uh, look really dark and weird uh, with a cap on. Uh, that's just the drugs. Uh, no, Susan's also uh, just said that next week we'll have Paul swinging on the pole. You could leave your cap on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't think Susan, she says things, you know, and doesn't realize sometimes, you know, that it has sometimes very different meanings, certainly in Billy Trey's mind and probably a lot of people <laughs> in the chat. Uh, but thank you so much, guys. I really do appreciate it. Uh, thank you, the mods. You've been absolutely brilliant. Uh, Alex and uh, Billy, even though you're bell ends. Uh, I love you, really. Um, but uh, you guys out there, legends again, 1,400 watching. You are really incredible. So thank you so much. Uh, me and Billy will be back tomorrow night with another show. Uh, we're going to do sort of a, a new show and involve you guys. And we're going to just uh, 
let you guys run the show with any questions that you might have, unless some breaking news starts again that we need to sort of go through. Um, and we'll see if we, you know, I might try and grab a guest to come on as well. So uh, uh, do join us, me and Billy, 7 p.m. tomorrow night. Uh, and uh, Alex, I will see you on Saturday uh, where I am going to punch you in the face. Actually, what day is it today? Thursday. It is Thursday. I thought it was. Jesus Christ, I'm losing the bloody plot, man. That's just the drugs again. Um, right, so we will see you all at 7 p.m. tomorrow night. Uh, in the meantime, enjoy the rest of your Thursday evening, guys. Have a blast. Get over to Loaded and put all those emojis in because I'm going to watch it now and have a good laugh. Uh, in the meantime, good night, guys. Where are the lads and lasses? Come back and check on some breathing.